original run trophy and the Birdwood Classic trophy will be retired this year. Um, a little sad perhaps, but wonderful that it can be kept and housed at the National Motor Museum. There are 34 winners with both of the trophies uh, that will remain on this trophy for perpetuity. The inaugural Beta Birdwood Trophy was designed by people at the Birdwood Mill Museum. The story goes that the base of this trophy is red gum and was sourced from a tree in the vicinity of Birdwood. There was a chap called Malcolm Walter who was a resident silversmith at the then Birdwood Mill Museum uh, and he was commissioned to produce the piece for the top of the trophy. They decided to take the design of the Shearer steam car. This is housed in the museum and was the first vehicle really to be put onto the road in South Australia is steam powered Shearer, designed by Mr. David Shearer. Did its first run down the main street of Manham in 1899. So there was a real significance to this vehicle that was uh, important to the state of South Australia and they decided therefore to honour it by this silversmith uh, designing it for the award. When you look closely at it, it is amazing. The intricacy of the design is uh, something spectacular, I think, to see. It's something that you really need to look at closely, not just at a distance, to see just how fabulous the workmanship in this trophy is. The Birdwood Classic, it's a very different trophy to the original run, and I think that's a great thing. The glass work shows more of a classic element to it. And the opal points, of course, to being um, a very iconic South Australian element to this trophy. Very significant, I think, that we've used artists from the jam factory in South Australia to design and um, manufacture the two new trophies. They have taken the brief, I think, that was given and uh, really uh, successfully crafted trophies that we're all very proud of. I have been in Jam Factory for one year and uh, I'm currently an uh, associate in Jam Factory Furniture Studio. Basically, I practice my own furniture making and design. For this trophy, I want to feature in a very important timber species in Australia. So I put through like um, my briefing, like I will feature 20 species of uh, Australian timber into this trophy design. And um, these trophy, like these 20 species will feature like 20 winners in the consecutive 20 years. How to put these 20 species together? So I think about like a coopering techniques, because uh, it's very good techniques kind of um, coopering barrels with the O's techniques. Using coopering techniques, there's a lot of challenges like you need to like kind of uh, deal with like gaps and glue up all those things. So um, I use MDF first and trying to mock up the basic shapes of uh, the trophy. And then I use the solid timber and trying to mock up the shapes of the final and trying to deal with some technical issues like how to glue them up tightly, how to avoid the gaps. So there's a lot of challenges and you know, technical issues. That's where the mock-ups will help try to deal with in the final one. So there's seamless, like there's no gaps at all. In the small trophy, I'm trying to simplify the history and time into a simple design, like a book-like. For the small trophy, I want to feature only like um, 
two like very popular uh, wood species in Australia is the blackwood and um, Tasmania oak. And because the color contrast is so obvious and so beautiful, like uh, one is very dark, one is quite light. So once the winner receives this kind of a book-like shape and trophy, they will like record their glory into this trophy and featuring my concept as well. I've always been interested in cars and I, lo I love old cars. So it was really exciting from the outset to have the opportunity to sort of like reflect on a way to visually represent that amazing time period from 1950 in like a trophy form. I went to the Motor Museum to have a look around and sort of suss it out and had, a, had spoke to a few people there and thinking about the fact that it's vehicles rather than you know cars or motorbikes or something like that, I was trying to think of something that was like a unifying feature of sort of vehicles of that time period. And so something that really stuck with me was like carburetors are just so interesting, especially in that post-World War II sort of era. It was pretty linear design process for me, like um, started off doing a sketch on a piece of MDF where I could just sort of get an idea of the, the shape of the curves that I wanted to represent and, and think about like, the number of components and all those sorts of things. Then I did a one-to-one -one mock up in MDF where I just sort of spent the day cutting all the components and stacking them up just to sort of get an idea visually of you know, whether that would work. Then I made a 3D computer model of the design, which then I could send to the laser cutters to get it laser cut. So yeah, that was, that was the process. There was a bit of sort of R&D going through the process of sort of finally settling on aluminium as the main material for my piece. Originally I was going to do it in steel. Found like an online calculator where I could put in the total surface area of all the components and get a weight and the major trophy was going to weigh 15 kilos. So after doing some testing, picking up bags of clay and trying to pretend to celebrate with a 15 kilo weight, we thought it might be, I don't know, people might hurt me. It, it's a public health risk. So. Um, yeah, I settled on aluminium, which is much lighter. This last one is, it's, it's seven or eight kilos. I haven't exactly weighed it, but it does have that sort of feeling of gravitas, sort of like holding a, holding a small child, but you can lift it over your head quite comfortably. So I sort of, I sort of like the weight, you know, like you don't want something that you pick up and kind of feels like flimsy or, you know, like this is solid aluminium. So it's, it's got a lot of weight to it and I think yeah, it's something that you can sort of hold and feel proud to, you know, to have won, which is important with trophies. Yeah, so this is the major trophy and the names will be inscribed on the back. So the back plate I made removable so that it can easily be sort of taken to, um, to the laser engraver. And then, yeah, the 20 names will be inscribed there over the 20 years that this will be the, the trophy for the event. Well, it's a great honour to be a trophy patron of Duncan Young's wonderful piece of work, which truly does embody classic motoring here in South Australia. This trophy talks to our automotive manufacturing past and our very exciting future when it comes to motoring tourism, motoring clubs, the National Motor Museum, and it's just a great celebration of classic motoring in South Australia. I think David Liel has been a master craftsperson in developing this trophy. He's taken different species of wood, each of them a different colour, each of them an individual, but working harmoniously together. There's some nice references to, uh, I guess, barrel staves in South Australia, but he's also crafted it as a, as a bit of a scroll, like the unfolding of a scroll of time, so that's a nice uh, feature as well. But one of the great things is when you hold it in your hands, I, I imagine somebody being passed this, this trophy as the winner of the Concorde d'Elegance and then they look in it and they see themselves. They see themselves as part of the history of the Bay to Birdwood, but also in recognition that without them there is no Bay to Birdwood. Without the people there is no Bay to Birdwood. The Bay to Birdwood is about the people and David has communicated that perfectly.
was so thrilled. I was so thrilled. Like when I first know, like I was selected by the panel, like as the designer of this greatest event in South Australia. Like so thrilled. I, I I don't believe it happened because there's many brilliant designer and makers in Jam Factory, and uh, I was so lucky to be selected to do this job. So I take it so seriously. <laughs> A real honour. Um, really, it's it's so exciting thinking about the idea of, you know, in 20 years being able to turn up to the Beta Birdwood event and see these trophies still being used. And yeah, it's really exciting, and I think it's a real honour, and I'm really happy to be a part of it.